Hey everybody, Beachy Owl here, and we're back working on the Jetta, the Patreon built Jetta. And we're going to show you guys how to uh, remove your sunroof cover and show you guys how to surface your drain, um, your drain uh, tubes for your sunroof. So, let's get to work, because this is Beachy Owl's Garage. first is your tool set. You need a Phillips screwdriver, a flyhead screwdriver, and a T30 Torx. Next, if you guys watched my previous uh, video on how to remove the headliner, the inside of your car should look like this. However, we're missing the sunroof cover which has already been removed. But I'm going to show you why we removed it first because some parts are really difficult to show you with it You'll on. You'll see here on each corner there's these two little stoppers. You see that? There's two stoppers in each corner. Your sunroof cover sits right up below it, so you can't see it. So I had to take a, uh, pull the sunroof cover off to show you how they work. And these little stoppers here on the sunroof cover hold the sunroof from going all the way out when you push it back. So what we had to do um, to remove your sunroof cover is obviously you pull your sunroof all the way back. And once it's all the way back, it's going to stop and hit these guys. Leave it there. Next step is to pop out the rear um, drain brackets right here. There's one here and there. Depending on the generation of your Mark IV or year, um, they're just two little clips and they pop out. Some of them will have a screw on the underside of them. And to get to that, you need to make sure that this rail is hanging. Not off, just hanging. So you can reach it with the 90 degree screwdriver and to get it. If not, you're never going to get these clips off you're going to end up breaking them. Once the clips are off or just hanging on the side, the next step is to uh, drop your sunroof to a point. Now you'll need to see here, there's a T30 here and there. They're both on the same exact side. You have six of them, six of these black T30 screws just like this. These T30 screws um, hold pretty much the main sunroof rails in place. So you got to remove four of them. The four that we need to remove is the this one here and this one on both sides. So this one and this one, that and that. Once those are removed, the last two, this T30 and that one over there, you're going to break them loose and go about halfway down on the threads. Do not remove them because if not, your sunroof will hang too much and you can cause some damage. So now that you have your two corners there and there pried up, your sunroof cover should be about here or maybe a little bit further back where it's stopped by this guy right here. So what you need to do is once it's there with your flyhead screwdriver you're going to go in here and you're going to push this guy up on the metal portion, not on the rubber piece, on the metal piece right here. You're going to bend it up and you're going to push this corner in and then repeat the process on this side. You're going to push this in and like this, you're going to bend it up slightly, just enough so the, the, the sunroof cover goes back. Once that happens, you're going to be able to push the cover all the way out and just slide it all the way out. And that's how you get your sunroof cover out. It's super simple. We're going to show you guys the installation process because we're going to show you how to install your entire headlight sunroof uh, cover and headliner. Now, one thing I was mentioning earlier is how to service your drain tubes. Um, and it's really simple since you have your sunroof down right now. Um, I'm going to show you what you guys need to do uh, next. So one thing that Mark IVs are super notorious for are uh, leaky headliners or water stains in your headliner. And the reason for this is because your car technically collects water. And this is what I mean. Um, your sunroof has a weather strip that's not 100% like waterproof. It's like water resistant. Water does drain down into it. 
um, and it drains into these little rails. See these black rails? These rails are actually drains. They're gutters. And what they do, if you see up here, see that little hole right here, this little channel? Water flows right through here and goes into these tubes, these drain pipes right here. You see this? This one's already done. It's done for. And this is super common. This is a very common problem with Mark IVs. These tubes break and they leak and they don't drain water where they're supposed to go and so you get water in um, pretty much in your car so to solve this problem we need to go to Home Depot and go get uh, a drain tube this size and what we do is if we run this tube from here all the way back down leave this one alone don't pull it out until you get your new one and we're gonna go show you guys where these tubes go you need to service all four of them there's one two three and four and these things again they're notorious because they're so old you know these cars are 20 years old so they're gonna leak um, so we gotta put them with brand new tubes but they're all the same size and this will solve the problem uh, where your drain tubes leak we're just gonna fix the sizing and we're just gonna run new tubes all the way down from each corner and stop that and by doing so you just get the, again you get the si proper size tube that mates up to this, which looks like a 3 8 and run a tube all the way down. Now what's cool about these, these are easy. These go from here, and if we go this way, they go here, work their way down inside the rail, all the way down to this guy right here. This is your little gutter drain here. Now one thing that's an issue with these drains um, they're not a solid hole they have like a little tiny hole in them and what happens these holes clog up with leaves dirt debris over the years what's gonna happen is even though your gutters are all your tube your drain tubes look proper what's gonna happen is they're gonna fill up with all this debris and then what's gonna happen is that it's gonna back up and clog and then you're gonna get water stains everywhere um, this is how you fix them. You, if your gutters or your, I can't keep saying calling gutters. If your drains are um, in good condition, then grab an air hose. So open your sunroof and grab an air hose from up here and shoot some air right into it. And then you should see all the nasty stuff just shoot out of this uh, port here, and that would solve all your problems for leaky um, uh, drains. If they're corroded and bad like the ones we have in this car then you need to go replace them okay so we're gonna go pick up some new drain hose and we'll be back and show you what to do next so you'll see here I pulled out the the drain tube for the driver side and again it's just a simple little rubber uh, drain tube you'll see here it's got a little hoe a little ho <laughs> hole <laughs> for it to, to drain now if these were clogged you'll see inside here if there was any like bunch of debris in there I don't see anything so we're good um, blow into it mm, just a little dirt but nothing crazy so what you do again you just uh, put that sucker back in these guys go in like this they have to be angled like this they can't be point it up you'll see that you can point them up or you can point them down make sure they're pointing straight down so it drains straight down to the to the ground right here you're gonna repeat the process on both on every corner um, one thing I did notice on mine on my rear gutter which is actually this one um, this one was damaged so but the cool thing is I was able to actually stretch the the hose over the actual fitting here and it fit perfectly and it didn't yank on the actual drain pipe in the back. So the drain for that one sits, if you follow it, goes from here to here. So you have to take off this rear uh, fender liner uh, to inspect that. I don't need to inspect it because I know for a fact I pour some water in here and it drained beautifully out to the back without any uh, issues. So um, without buying anything new, I was able to slip it over. It was a lot harder because this is smaller than the actual size here so but I was able to slip it over and fix the problem without spending any money not bad if you guys have really bad ones 
These are 3 8 by the way, and you can slip them over. Just make sure it's it's a good stretchy tube that you can use. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that repair. I'm going to go check the other side and make sure that's okay. Same with that one. And then we should be good. Uh, to test them, make sure you put the clips back in place like this. And squish them really nice and firm down because there's a special black sealant here that holds, um, pretty much uh, makes a waterproof seal. You grab a cup of water and you can pour it through the sunroof right here. Pour it right here and just let it guide down and it will drain where it needs to drain. Um, what, you're, what you're looking for is making sure that it drains out of the car and doesn't stay, um, stay in place. So that way you know for a fact you actually did repair it. All your drain tubes should be draining. If they do, if all of them drain, then uh, problem solved. You fix all your leaks. All right, so super, super easy repair. Uh, so for you guys that have old Mark IVs that are, you know, out in the East Coast that leak a lot, that's your fix. And make sure you do your gutters, you blow through them, and drain any or clean them all as nice as you can. I also recommend greasing the rails where the uh, sunroof slides back and forth with some uh, white lithium grease. Uh, a little bit of grease goes a long way and that will make the motor not work as hard for the sunroof to open and close. So that's another service that we recommend you doing. Do not just put any old everyday grease. It's white lithium grease is what you grease these rails with. Um, and that's pretty much it for the service. Uh, so that's how you get these guys put back in just like that. Uh, make sure this is nice and firm. Same with this uh, drain right here. You'll see it's right there. Uh, pull this out like that. That way you have the, the length you need here. So you can put this guy back in place, push it in, pull it back up, and seal it up again. That's, that's the process for the front side, the rear. Um, if they're damaged, you're going to need to peel off all the damaged plastic on the back and then make sure that the, the, the drain tube is in good condition. If it is, just slip it back over to the original factory mounting point and you're done. Alright, so we're down to the installation of your, um, what do you guys call it, <laughs> sorry, uh, the sunroof cover. So, just so you guys know, uh, I forgot to shave this morning, so I got a big mutton chop just chilling right here. I'm going to fix that in a minute, and so I'm going to point that out right now before anybody else points it out later. <laughs> uh, so, like we were talking about earlier, uh, the covers on the side, both of them have to be up. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab your your sunroof here, cover, and you're going to slide one corner in, and the other one as well, as even as you can. And this is where it becomes a little difficult, because you don't want to damage anything on the way in. Just like that. Okay. So, now that you have your cover in, remember how we were talking about earlier about these, uh, these little guardrails uh, that prevent it from, from going in? You're going to use, oh god it's bothering me, <laughs> this shape right now. So it's going to get stuck and what you need to do, again, we're going to use the flathead screwdriver and we're going to pry them up. So they pop and go back in the same way they came out. Oh, this is where they went. All right, give me a so, second. I'll be right back. Where we left off is we're going to need... Pull this forward. You can see these guys are stopping it. You guys can see that. 
that little guy is stopping it right there. So we're going to pry this up and then push the sunroof cover further in. One side, like that, and that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. And now the three, the six torxes that were here. Uh, remember to push your your tube, your tube, uh, your rails back in, nice and firm, making sure none of them are damaged process and then what you're going to do is put your three or your six torxes back in push them back up and then you got yourself a nice closing sunroof cover just like that next step now we're going to show you guys how to install your actual sunroof because sunroofs are a little uh, a little tricky in how they go in um, you see this little notch right here and this notch right here uh, they, they have to go in there and it's a pain because there's not a lot of space to do it in and you have a lot of risk of damage in it so we're gonna show you how to do that in a little bit be right back guys all right we're back after a break so again using your t30s right here You got three of them on each side. Don't forget. Don't put them in all snug. Just get them on there. That way you can align this nicely. Um, it's not really much of an alignment, but it's just so the uh, screws on each side go actually in. Pretty snug. All six of them. Fell. Well, I fell and kicked you guys. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Beautiful. So all six bolts are done on both sides. Double check all your lines. Make sure none of this is breaking, falling apart. If so. Obviously fix and adjust accordingly. Um, put your little rubber insets all back in, all across the wall around. Once you're done with that, test your, your slider. Make sure this is, slides beautifully. If that all works, next step is to install the headliner. Once the headliner is in, then the next step is to do all your pillars. And then after all that's in, the rest of your interior follows. So let's get the headliner installed because there's a couple tricks you guys need to see. All right, so now we're here for the installation. Now, remember we talked about how the headliner has to hook in. Remember that and it has to hook in in three different spots. The front, the middle, and the back. The back is going to be last because that's the hardest part to get in. 
because the middle should get you in pretty quickly. It's the, the back where there's going to be such a headache to get in. So, first things first on your headliner, making sure that uh, all your wires are moved to where they need to be. So, that's going to be first. Um, don't want to make sure, don't want to lose your wiring and stuff. So we will be moving our main harness over here. Because we have, let's see. Let make sure that's there. Oops. See, I already forgot two holes. Um, give me a minute here so I can get that taken care of. We're back. Made the holes. Okay, so wiring has to be pushed through. If not, you're not going to get everything. Nothing's going to work. Or you're going to... You're not gonna, you're gonna be missing stuff, all right? And then we lift this guy up. From the middle, which would be the safest option. And then, let's see here. You have a spot here that it has to hook into. And then it has to hook in up here as well. Now if it's too tight, you can work your way around it. Um, trying to bend it left and right, but be careful not to bend it too much because it won't hook in nicely. It'll just fall down just like that. Um, because what you're going to need to do is this has to be pushed back as far as back you can so you can hook it back there in the in the back of the the car. Then you have hooks back here as well. And that's the trick is to get get this side to go in and then because by yourself the issue you have is you have nothing to hold it if you're here with the second person then you hook in the back first and then you hook in the front the middle and I mean yeah no, so the back the middle middle front and then the front of it and then you're done but since I'm here by myself, um, I have to force this portion in as tight as I can, and then I gotta pull it up and over, over here. And see if I can get it to stick. If not, we're going to have to push this out. Uh, sorry guys. I'll get you guys in just a second. Oh man, had a good fall there. So, I got it hooked up in the back. But the issue now we have is again, by yourself. It's a, it's a hassle. <laughs> so I'm trying to get this uh, front piece hooked on. So you gotta like 
tap it forward as much as you can. See if we get the hook on. See, and that's what I didn't want it to do. See that? It fell out. So, I gotta get my wife and have her come and hold the back end while I get the front and then light it all up. It's such a pain. But once you get it, it'll go in. And then it'll look perfect. So, how to get my wife to help me out. So with two people, you're going to need to have this end and this end clip in at the same time. If not, you're never going to get the headliner in in a Jetta. In a, G in a GTI, it's a lot easier, but we got it. So the headliner's all in. Um, all your pillars should go in the same way you took them off. There's nothing special. Uh, they all pop right off, pop right on. Uh, one thing that we did have an issue with is this guy right here. You'll see the clip broke. So we got to go and steal one off of another part of the car and then we can put it back on. Um, but besides that though, everything came out beautiful. Uh, headliner came in really good. Pillars are all lining up correctly. Um, so I'm very, very happy with the uh, end result currently uh, with the headliner. Uh, next episode, we're going to be dropping the subframe, pulling the rear beam, taking the control arms off, uh, all, the all the suspensions coming apart. And then we're redoing everything uh, on the lower end of the car. So once suspension is done, then we're going to be doing um, uh, braking. Once the brake system's done, uh, I'm thinking we're going to invest in electrical, uh, lighting, stereo system, and stuff like that. And then, last but not least, the engine. By then, we'll have Luis's engine fully built and done. So we'll use his engine to brake in the car and get everything going. And that way, you guys have content for a stock motor. While that's being built and driven and broken into, and we'll take it to car shows so that way you guys can see it, um, and then give them a drop off the motor at Luis's house, and then we'll build our our, our high compression uh, built motor, and that should end pretty much the season. Oh no no, uh, we got to wrap the car, we got to get wheels, we got to do some fender flares. We're gonna give it an aggressive performance stance as well on this car, and a lot more interior work uh, modifications as well coming soon. So that's pretty much it. Again, guys, reverse installation. If you guys watched the, the removal of the headliner video, you guys know how to remove it. So all that's left is going to be just reverse uh, install. Uh, I, on my uh, YouTube channel, I do have how to wrap the headliner. So you guys have a whole entire DIY. It's the same process on a GTI or a Jetta. Nothing special. Um, again, we got to put our handles in, the covers. Uh, headliner, we painted the, um, the 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 handle right there black, so it gave it a nice little little touch to it. Uh, nothing like I said, nothing crazy uh, special, but it came out very very good thanks to my wife, who did all the pillars and matched all the lines up as best she could. Um, that way, the there's no complications or confusion on lines. Uh, I did the headliner portion. I wrapped the top. She wrapped this guy and all the pillars. So end result is amazing, and I'm glad because my wife did it all, uh, all the hard stuff. I did the easy stuff. Um, so thanks for tuning in this episode of Pinchao's Garage, and as always, please hit that like and the bell and subscribe because the more people subscribe to this channel, the more DIYs are created. And you got to give thanks to all the Patreon members uh, for be, uh, donating to the channel. Because without them, this DIY would never happen. So, if you guys are interested, please, please, please become a Patreon. Uh, the Patreon link is down below. Uh, by becoming a Patreon, uh, it offers us uh, the ability to create all this content. The more Patreon members we get, the faster we make content. Nothing crazy and special about that. Um, 
So thank you everybody who actually uh, who is a Patreon member. And just remember, once this car is done and built, we're giving it away to one Patreon member. I am not keeping this car. This car is going to a Patreon member. So for every member that is an active Patreon member, they get one entry to the contest. So if we have 20 Patreons, we have 20 entries. Pretty straightforward. Um, so that means 1 in 20 chance. But say if we have 200 or 400 or 1,000, well, number one, this car gets built super fast. Number two, um, way more content. Number three, you guys get a much sooner chance to win this car once we're done. And it's going to be beautiful. I guarantee you this car is going to be gorgeous when we're done with it. You guys are going to love it. We're going to give it a wrap. Again, also by becoming a Patreon member, you guys make the decision on what gets done to the car every time. We have a poll for the next... Uh, pretty much process uh, currently suspension is the winner so suspension components are on their way pretty straightforward and the cool thing about it is that once we order suspension components we teach you all the DIYs on what to do with those components I love it it's awesome and all thanks to patreon members thank you have a wonderful night and peace out